to uh, stand and ask that uh, uh, Tim Lyon offer the invocation. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by uh, uh, Councilwoman Eads. Please join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, come before thee this night, grateful for this opportunity to gather and exercise democracy in this great country. Father, we thank thee for the men and women that serve this country and protect our freedoms. Father, we ask thee to watch over our men and women that work in this great city that they might be safe in, in protecting us and serving our needs. Father, we ask thee to bless this city council tonight that thy spirit might be with them and that they might be touched into making quality decisions and in the best interest of our community and they might work well with one another and these things we pray for in the name of thy son Jesus Christ amen, amen. Thank you. Okay, we do have uh, several public announcements uh, we need to go over. Uh, September 3rd, our swim pool will be closing down for the summer and uh, or for the rest of the winter. Uh, we've had a very successful year this year. Um, I would remind you that uh, the Midwest City High School is ho hosting a large cross-country event at the uh, Soldier Creek Industrial Park September 8th. The number of schools has doubled from last year, so it's going to be a huge event. The infamous doggy paddle will be held at the Regional Park Pool uh, September 3rd. Uh, Summerfest uh, will be held in uh, Town Square September 7th and also the fishing clinic will be held September 8th in uh, Joby Barnes Regional Park. Are there any other community announcements that the council would like to entertain? I have two. Yes ma'am. Mr. Mayor, first off um, it's football season y'all and Carl Albert versus Midwest City High School at Carl Albert Friday night. Um, please come out and support our Midwest City kids. <clears throat> uh, also, I don't know if everyone has seen this, but um, the Steve Owens uh, Memorial Run um, has been announced and there are forms out there available for folks to start to sign up. The event will take place on Saturday, November the 3rd of 2018, but you can be planning ahead and if you're me, trying to get in shape to exercise. Um, and so that this year's benefit um, go to benefit two kids of um, Midwest City employees uh, Abby Sanders and Corbin Nicholas and so um, I would direct your attention to uh, that event if you're so inclined to please come out and support those endeavors well thank you Miss Eads I would I, I missed one upstairs uh, we've had our first meeting uh, for the 2018 uh, Veterans Day Parade, uh, Gary Bantz has been uh, asked and has accepted the uh, role of Grand Marshal for this year's parade due to all of his work in the honor flights and also bringing the C-47 back home to our town. So uh, that event will be held November 12th. Uh, and it should be as big, if not better, than last year. Mayor, Any other announcements? Just a couple quick ones. Um, um, since we have Labor Day weekend uh, coming up on uh, next weekend and this coming weekend, uh, Monday sanitation service will uh, occur on Wednesday for those that, that uh, have their sanitation service on Monday. And also recycling will be uh, in accordance with week A of the recycling schedule. I also wanted to uh, to pass on some some good um, good news that we received from the um, Oklahoma Attorney General's office today that uh, uh, our police department has received another uh, and I don't know how many this makes but uh, it's we've had quite a few of them uh, the Oklahoma uh, safe uh, 
uh, Oklahoma grant program. Uh, we uh, will uh, receive, the police department will receive a grant of $50,000, uh, which will be used for over, overtime funds to target violent crime throughout the community. So we want to thank, thank them for uh, making uh, that effort to uh, pursue that grant application. Thank you. Well, I think there's some people to honor some a person here tonight, so uh, let me go. Kathy, come on down. One of the things we do in Midwest City is we honor our employees. And uh, we've been retiring a lot lately. Uh, the boomers are going home. Uh, I should have done that. But um, anyway, uh, I've worked with Kathy. Uh, she's been with the city quite a while. And again, uh, although we're sorry to see you go, we're also uh, proud of you, that, uh, of the job that you've done for the city. And also, uh, we. Uh, wish you the best of luck in the next door that you're walking through. So with that being said, whereas Kathy Trainer began in her career as Staff Secretary for the Midwest State Fire Department on January 16, 1992, and then transferred to the newly formed Neighborhood Services on Janu or June 22, 2000, later being promoted to Administrative Secretary on February 23rd, 2006, and she'll be retiring after 25 and a half years of service to the city of Midwest City on August 31st. Whereas her commitment and dedication has helped to create a finely tuned department that has helped or has developed into driving into a driving force integral to the daily operations of the city and essential to enhancing the quality of life by helping to sustain life healthy. Uh, living conditions in Midwest City, and whereas Kathy's caring spirit, efficiency, and wisdom have helped our citizens navigate the challenges associated with many facets of city ordinances, and she's helped initiate and organize several outreach programs that neighborhoods and actions offer our community. And whereas her work ethic and loyalty are described perfectly by the Neighborhood Services Department Director Mike Stroh. Kathy takes good care of our department and me. She is the type of employee that gets work done early and likes for her desk to be cleaned off. That's sick. <laughs> and her work be caught up before she goes home. She will be greatly missed. And whereas Kathy, Kathy has been a, only a secretary. Uh, that's kind of, I don't like that. <laughs> the, oh, I'm sorry. The only secretary in, in, in neighborhood services has ever had the life bond and backbone of the operations that have facilitated the ever changing demands of this department for which the neighborhood services department and the city of Midwest City is forever grateful. So therefore, I'm Matt Dukes, Mayor of Midwest City. You hereby proclaim that you get a day. Yay. Did you get the day off? No. Yeah. What's up with that, guy? Uh, August 29, 2018 is Kathy Trainer Day. Mr. Mayor, while you're returning to your seat, I had one more announcement I wanted to make before a lot of these people walk out of this room that are at the back. Um, if everybody in the audience hasn't seen it, if you check out what's on the Midwest City Beacon or from our Midwest City Police Department, 
Um, a large portion of our community action officers are in the back of the room and they were just spotted doing something good, which is my favorite attribute of every morning on the talk radio program. Uh, they checked on the welfare of a local resident, um, found that her self-propelled lawnmower was broken. Uh, the resident explained to him she really enjoys mowing her yard and does it as a form of exercise. So our community action officers went to Home Depot store and uh, looked at some mowers and were pricing them. And um, one of, or excuse me, the manager there at the Home Depot agreed to provide that lawnmower and also city staff was involved in agreeing to provide servicing for that lawnmower. So um, I wanna thank you gentlemen in the back of the room, particularly since also your boss is here and your boss's boss is here to recognize all of your efforts in that regard. I mean, that really, that says a lot to all of your all's character and to your dedication to residents of the city and I thank you. Anything else? Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to uh, also recognize uh, Sergeant Anthony Lee, who uh, is standing in the, uh, the back there next to uh, his chief. Uh, Sergeant Lee uh, received a uh, special recognition from Channel 9 last week uh, for his efforts at um, um, trying to make whole uh, a, um, uh, a World War II veteran that had uh, whose home had been burglarized and who lost um, his World War II medals and so Anthony went on his own mission uh, to uh, uh, to recreate all of those medals that had been lost by uh, this individual and so um, uh, it was um, uh, truly a um, a heartwarming um, mission on his part to, to really make, make this, this man's um, uh, day, so to speak, in his life by, by, re, by getting all those medals back to him. So Anthony, uh, on behalf of myself and I know the council, we, we appreciate all of the, uh, the special effort and time that you put in uh, in, uh, in accomplishing that. Uh, you didn't have to do it, that was just going above and beyond um, the line of duty, and we appreciate you. The last time somebody asked you to say something, you were pretty re reluctant. Do you have any have any uh, second thoughts about that? You could come come down here if you want to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant Lee, for your efforts on that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's just what we do in Midwest City. We're gonna if we really want to pile on Anthony, he's also heavily involved in the Special Olympics, and I think yes, it's. He is. Uh, I think he's raised about nine thousand dollars this year for Special Olympics, so we appreciate that also. And, well, I and think Anthony, we ought to promote him to chief. <laughs> a a Anthony, is there anything that you might want to come down and say about the Special Olympics? <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Um, as, as far as the Special Olympics go, this year we've managed to raise, uh, as a department, a little bit over $9,000. Um, and we've still got several events coming up to include, uh, on September the 15th, we've got a Cops on Donut Shops over at Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, that'll be from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. We'll be out there. We're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to set up a couple more events called Tip of Cops at some of our local restaurants where we go in and we help the wait staff and things like that. Um, so, I mean, we're just trucking along, doing as much as we can. So, but thank you. You're, you're involved in the torch run too, are you not? Yes. Could yes. you talk uh, a little bit about that? There's uh, the, the law enforcement torch run is a, uh, um, it's the entity of the law enforcement that, that they're combined, you know, that they're a partnership with the Special Olympics. And our goal is twofold. It's to raise awareness for athletes with special needs and things like that to uh, and, and to kind of 
show that they're accepted and also to raise funds. Um, state of Oklahoma, as of last year, I think we raised uh, a little bit over $400,000 uh, total through the law enforcement torch run. Midwest City had, um, uh, you know, we contributed to that as well. Um, we're going to continue to do it. And I mean, it's just, there's about 12,000 special needs athletes across the state. Um, and so that's what we work for to help. So. Yep. Thank you. Is a uh, polar plunge event that benefits Special Olympics on an annual basis. I'm sure Sergeant Lee can provide the details to um, those folks here on the horseshoe who would be interested in uh, stepping out to raise funds in that endeavor. So uh, done that, ain't done it again. <laughs> the the polar plunge is a, is an event that's in February. Uh, it's held every year, or at least the last several years, it's been held at Whitewater Bay. Um, this year, whenever I jumped, it was about 38 degrees outside, and the water was colder than that, so it was, it was fun times. Um, we do, uh, we'll put something on through, whenever it starts getting closer, we'll put something on to the city Facebook page to where you can have a link that if you would like to donate. Uh, if, if you would like to be involved and raise money too, then all you have to do is raise $75, and you can sign up and come out there and, and take a plunge with everybody else. Uh, it's a... Oklahoma City does it, Oklahoma County. This is a huge kind of metro polar plunge. Um, everybody in the metro kind of comes to this area. Uh, it's, it's a big event. There's a lot of costumes, and, and um, it, we, we raise quite a bit of money doing the polar plunge. And you have a colleague who at least roots for Green Bay, so clearly cold weather, cold <laughs> water shouldn't affect him. So no. I'm sure we'll be able to see both of you all out there jumping this well. February, right? I'll, I'll try to get my lieutenant in there. So we, we couldn't I get him in get last year. I didn't get the thumbs up, but okay. So. <laughs> but thank you so thank much you for everything you do. Okay, anything else? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move into our consent agenda. These items are placed on consent agendas of the council by unanimous consent. Can approve routine agenda items by one motion. If any item proposed does not meet with the approval of all council or members of the audience which discuss an item, it will be removed and heard in regular order. Chair, to entertain a motion. Motion to approve with the exception of item number seven. I'm sorry, I went blank for a second. Seven. Anybody a, a second? Second. Sorry. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? We was just waiting for the mayor to say that. Sorry. <laughs> I've lost total control <laughs> of this whole thing. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor indicate for saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstention? Motion carries. Uh, first discussion item? This is the uh, B's number seven. We're, that would be discussion consideration of approving and entering into a cooperative agreement with the Midwest City Chamber of Commerce that governs the terms and conditions under which that organization will receive up to $5,000 from the city for the 2018 Youth Excel program. Uh, I'm not hearing any discussion, oh, discussion? so I'm uh, uh, going to assume we're going to well, move forward with this. Well, we didn't know if any. I have a discussion uh, in that matter. Uh, I'm looking at this, and it only consists of uh, two schools. And this is this program is is the Youth Excel program, which uh, Midwest City contributes to this. And I feel that if we have a program such as this it should allow the opportunity for all of Midwest City youth to have a chance to be able to participate in such a, I would say, a great program as this. I love the program, Bonnie. Uh, it's a great program, but I feel like it needs to be expanded to uh, Midwest City youth entirely. Um, with us uh, only just having two schools, I, I don't think it gives the other youth in Midwest City, the residents of Midwest City, the youth, 
a chance to participate in such a great program as this. I feel that uh, Midwest City is a city where we make sure all our youth <coughs> are given a chance here in Midwest City to be the best and do the best and show us later on just how great Midwest City is and what it has done for them and giving them a chance to be involved in. So with that, I understand, uh, Bonnie, that this particular program, uh, I don't know if it's coming up soon. Or where are you, Bonnie? Is it coming up soon to where you Can we invite to? her to the microphone so she can speak? Thank you. Bonnie, come on, would Bonnie, you like to come down front and offer some And I'd like to say while she's coming down that this includes even we have children of Midwest City uh, residents that attend other cities, uh, Jones, I mean, I believe Choctaw and some others. And so I think they should have an opportunity to be involved with this particular program if they so desire and their parents want them to. But I'm, we, try, we need to find a way to have inclusion uh, with this and uh, meaning expanded if it where it possibly it can be. So one of the reasons that I, I wanted Bonnie to be able to discuss while you were talking to her, but so you could speak on the fact that Midwest City Chamber, Midwest City Schools, Oklahoma City Chamber does the same thing even for, or should be doing the same thing. You said there's money available and Oklahoma City does this for other high schools in Oklahoma City. That's correct. And that, so this program is available for those schools, those kids at Star Spencer, through the Oklahoma City Chamber. That yes, because it's in Oklahoma City. So they, these kids have access to the exact same kind of program through the Oklahoma City Chamber that Midwest City kids have through the Midwest City Chamber at Midwest City and Dale City. That's correct. I'm sorry, Midwest City and Carlsville. And we got pretty far out into the weeds on this one upstairs in pre-council, but um, this program was designed by Midwest City Chamber of Commerce. Is that correct? It was, uh, Guy, and you may need to help me on this because it's been 23 years, I believe. It was a joint effort with uh, city officials and Chamber of Commerce officials. Well, let me together. rephrase that. The, okay. the Chamber of Commerce, the Midwest City Chamber of Commerce administers this program. Correct. Fair. And so what you're really coming for us to do is just make this $5,000 donation, which will cover um, a large percentage of the cost of administering this program, is right. that correct? And it's on reimbursement. We we fund it up front and then it's on reimbursement. Okay, and so would it be fair to say that if we were to approve this agreement this evening, um, which would include the, the $5,000 re reimbursable expenses, that for next year, for example, would it be possible to take a look at what some of the concerns are to make sure that other students who are Midwest City residents but maybe attend other high schools are being served elsewhere um, and have some time to be able to look at that. And Susan, I'm not opposed to that other than with the program that we do, we are limited to the to number of students that right. can go through it because of the places that host us can only accommodate. Sure. Um, so can you make sure next year right. that you have spoken with Oklahoma city chamber and make sure that star spencer and some of the other yes schools that uh, that Absolutely. Midwest city that they that they're being so taken care of by them yeah make mm -hmm. sure that they're being taken care of by the right chamber. that was right. that was where i was headed right. with that so some of the surrounding schools is not just star spencer there's even um residents uh Midwest city residents that attend what choctaw and there's some others that they sit outside i'm talking about Midwest City residents, and I feel like uh, we should uh, implement that. It may be a change, but you know, I feel like we're growing, and we need to grow positively and and have uh, more interaction with uh, all of our uh, youth in Midwest City. We have to reach out, and uh, I know it's uh, some other cities that surround that we uh, that kids, uh, not I won't say kids, but our youth uh, of Midwest City live in Midwest City, but they have to attend another school. So I would like to see us work on that. Um, I'm, I love this program. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, give them my vote on it 
but uh, I'd like to see something next year uh, where it expand out to all of the youth here in Midwest City and, and, and the Christine, residents. I appreciate that. If we open it up to one school in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. then we would have to open it up to all. Yes, yes, definitely. Because so, I feel so that how communication. Can you that is, I guess, my point. So it's I'm how? I'm going to go back to my point okay. that these residents that are in the Oklahoma City Public Schools have are being serviced or served by the Oklahoma City Chamber. They have the opportunity to Correct. apply. For the so they're not being left out. They're being taken care of by their school district, and the Chamber um, of Commerce that is in that school district. Yes. And I guess I guess the bottom line is let's make sure we reach out to Oklahoma City Chamber and we have a coordinated event to make sure all these kids are allowed to uh, apply for theirs as well. <laughs> is, is there and that being said, is there a chamber in uh, Choctaw that we would have to connect Choctaw, with? Choctaw Chamber of Commerce yeah. has yeah. had a youth program in the past. I don't okay. believe they have for the last two years. I've okay, I would ask. I asked. Uh, I asked. I would like to say this: uh, when we sent out our sent out water bills to our residents here in Midwest City, maybe we can uh, mention something in reference to that about the youth uh, Excel program. The schools do that, don't they? To all the. Can I ask the, a question? Uh -huh. Do you guys um, actually work with the counselors in the schools yes, also, and give those applications to them to fill out to complete those? to be uh, for you guys to review? Yes, we, we work with each counseling office and what we do is we get a mailing list from the administration office to mail to all, It's the program is for juniors in Carlisle and Midwest That was City. my next question. Yes, right. okay. That, so I that being said. Mr. Reed's motion to accept it. So I uh -oh. say that if we go, if we look at possibly uh, when we send out water bills to our residents here in Midwest City, we can uh, implement that, put that information in there and have them to contact you and you can give them the information that th they would need to give to their counselor in order to be submitted. Am I, is that appropriate? Or she can't, yes, she can't do I that. That would have to be the city function on that. <coughs> that would have to be a city function and, and we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that happens, Ms. Allen. I so I do have it. a motion and I have a second on the floor. Can we do is a roll call? When I'll roll, we roll call vote? Yes. Okay, uh, City Clerk, can you conduct a roll call vote on this issue? Ward 1? Yes. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. 4? Yes. 5? Yes, and uh, I look forward to expanding next year. Now I'm going to give my vote. 6? Yes. yes. Mayor? Yes. Uh, Thank you, Bonnie, you very much. Carries. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Ms. Chewood, for being here. <coughs> uh, we'll don't go into our regular discussion items. First item is public hearing uh, 1953. This is public hearing with discussion consideration of approval of an ordinance to redistrict from RMH2 manufactured home park manufactured home park district to planned unit development PUD governed by the RMD medium density residential district and a resolution to amend the comprehensive plan from MH manufactured home to MDR medium density residential for the property described as attractive land lying in the northwest quarter of section 25 township 12 north range 2 west located at 2222 north douglas boulevard this item was continued at the june 26 2018 council meeting at the june july 25th 2018 council meeting the council allowed this revised pud to be reheard by the planning commission on august 7th 2018. mr arles Thank you, Mr. Henson. Um, yes, as you kind of alluded to, that this uh, this was first heard at the June 5th Planning Commission meeting, and at th that time, the applicant was still trying to work through some of the details uh, for funding through uh, uh, federal grants and, and whatnot. Um, as they uh, the time for the meeting uh, approached, they were still bringing a lot of the details forward, um, and staff didn't really have a, t a chance to um, absorb the, 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 the facts that, that were being presented in the layouts um, and um, caused the, uh, uh, a little uh, uneasiness with the, the, the Planning Commission um, to, to evaluate the, uh, the proposal. Um, at that time, it was uh, um, uh, uh, rejected or uh, recommended, uh, uh, rejected to the council. Um, the 
the applicant had um, regrouped and um, took into consideration a lot of the staff comments, um, planning staff, engineering, um, police and fire comments, um, asked to go back to the planning commission um, and put together uh, a lot better application. They reduced the density from uh, 88 units down to 76 units. Um, that's uh, over 8.64 acre development. They uh, uh, improved circulation through the, uh, through the uh, development, uh, increased uh, uh, visibility, um, which was a big concern um, for the uh, area, increased the uh, uh, visibility within the area. Let's see if I can pull up. Um, and at that point, um, the Planning Commission um, uh, felt that they had uh, done what was asked for them and, and, and recommended approval uh, to the uh, council at that point, um, and staff recommends approval as well. Uh, the applicant does have a slideshow that if, uh, if, the, if the, the mayor pleases that they would like to go through. Um, uh, be glad to answer any questions and the applicant is here for. Would the council like to see this uh, presentation? I, I have a, I have a couple questions of the applicant. Could the applicant uh, come down? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Chris Gray with Craft and Toll Associates representing the applicant. Uh, we would like to present a, a short presentation to explain our, our project to you, um, and then we'd be happy to answer questions. Um, I think it's the wishes of the council that we move through this, and I, it really the, there's only a few questions that they do have. And Mr. Burns, uh, you had the floor. Okay, there's, there's two questions. I asked one of them upstairs, and I didn't think you would know the answer to this one. In the staff reports, it states that uh, one of the commissioners asked if there was a penalty if the property was sold at, one, at the point. And the answer in that was that you all were going to provide that information to us prior to the council meeting. And I'm not sure that was done. Okay, we may have misunderstood the timing of that. Uh, I've got Mr. Scott Stortaboom here with us, and he can help speak to that point. Just state your name and address for, for, for the record. Sir. Certainly. I'm Scott Stortaboom, uh, 1489 Stillwater Drive, Holland, Michigan. Thank you. Okay. The statement in the report is it's, it's R. Smith, which is Commissioner Smith, asked if there was a penalty if the property was sold. The applicant stated he thought so and would confirm prior to the council meeting. And that's what I'm asking, if that was confirmed. If Since it's a fun, it's grant and it's federal money, the property sold, is there a penalty back to you all? There is, it's very difficult to sell. Um, there would be a U.S. Department, uh, a U.S. HUD depart, uh, mortgage on the property, which is a 40-year mortgage, and Harbor House Foundation would enter into that mortgage with HUD. There is really very little opportunity to sell that property with the, that. A mortgage however financial failure something like that HUD would step in and take over management of the property that being said there are requirements on that property that remain no matter who would be the owner the requirements of income limitation would live on for the full 40 years so whether Harbor House Foundation would own it or not um, those requirements would remain Okay, Billy, will you make sure that the Planning Commission gets that information? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, the second question I have is, I asked the gentleman upstairs and he didn't know, and this may go to Mr. Jones. Okay, uh, I'm familiar with the mission downtown. I, uh, I, I worked downtown for many years mm -hmm. and drove by that on a daily basis. And I'm not opposed to this coming to Midwest City. It's not. But I just... No, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to what you're doing. Oh, I see. But that's what I want to hear from you is that this is a completely separate entity in that you're not being encouraged to move that location because what's going on close to you downtown, I mean, that's, that's developing a lot. Yes, sir. And uh, I just want to make sure that we're not getting the mission here in Midwest City. I, I totally understand. As the president of City Rescue Mission, uh, I, f I fully 
have no intention whatsoever of relocating City Rescue Mission to Midwest City. The uh, advancements that are taking place, there's a $70 million project one block away from City Rescue Mission. I called the, the developer and said, <clears throat> have you noticed who, who dwells a block away from where you're doing this? And he said, absolutely. He said, but everybody we talk to in city government in Oklahoma City is extremely proud of what City Rescue does. We, we don't, the crime rate, when I took over the mission, dropped 45% in the area by the mission because of what we did at the mission, opposed to the period of years prior to 12 years ago. I did 33 years on the Oklahoma City Police Department, so I'm well aware of what it was I like. I bet you would. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> no, it is not. We are not moving. As a matter of fact, uh, when Mayor Cornette was in office, he used to bring his guests down by the mission and ask them, say, you have any idea what that is? And they'd say, it looks like a school or something, because it, it used to be a school, the building. And he said, no, that's how Oklahoma City deals with their homeless. Where there's a lot of misunderstanding is there are what is known as the chronic homeless or the street homeless, those who have no desire whatsoever to receive the help and services at City Rescue. And sometimes they're the ones standing down town with cards and you know the panhandling and all that stuff but those are not residents of city rescue okay. and we're not moving we're happy and the city is happy with us and there is no connection between the two whatsoever okay the third question is the parking the, the slots in yes sir what's what are we going to do on that tighten the verbiage up yeah, I think uh, 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 Councilman Reed uh, was a, it was a good suggestion to hold them to the uh, one one thirty eight, I believe, is what it was. One thirty eight parking as a as a minimum requirement, which would over the overall project would give them a. So a we're basically going to gonna strike the one and a half spaces for seventy six, <laughs> and the variance granted would not be to one fourteen. <coughs> it would say the variance is granted to one hundred and thirty eight spaces. I think the applicants are able to You guys that. are fine with that. Yes, sir. <coughs> well, that being said, uh, is there any further discussion on this item? Gentlemen, we're, we're not opposed to seeing your slideshow, but we're kind of pressed for time. Um, it, it is available to us, and we can go back and watch it. And thank you for being here. So uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Make, Make a motion please. subject to all comments, including the variance. Parking. I'm sorry, hold on just a minute. We do have a gentleman that has signed up to speak on this particular issue. Uh, Jim, I can't make out your handwriting. You're good? Well, thanks for being here. Uh, with that being said, the chair would entertain a motion. I just made one. Second. Could you restate it? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to pass subject to all council comments including the variances on the parking to 138 second i've got a motion and a second any further discussion hearing none all in favor indicate saying aye aye, aye. opposed abstention motion carries next item for discussion this is pc Thank 1962 you. discussion consideration of approval of the proposed preliminary plat of nichols of NIDER edition described as a part of the southeast quarter of section 31 township 12 north range 1 west ad addressed as 10712 northeast 4th street mr harless uh, yes sir this is a uh, 0.96 acre development uh, uh it's really to basically split the uh, tract into three uh tracks uh, for construction of homes uh, the the tracks will be 1400 square feet uh, uh or the parcels will be. Um, we've seen quite a bit of this uh, around in this area off of, of uh, Timber and Forth. Um, Planning Commission and staff recommend approval. Are there any questions or discussion? Chair, to entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. I second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next discussion item. 
This is PC 1963, public hearing with discussion consideration of an ordinance to redistrict from R6 single family residential to SPUD simplified plan unit development governed by the C3 community commercial district for the property described as a part of the southeast quarter of section 32 township 12 north range 1 west located at 11901 east reno avenue mr harless yes uh, this is a uh, for, for the development of a uh, dollar general store at the uh, intersection the northwest corner of anderson and reno um, the applicant brought, brought it through for spud because they were requesting a variance to the height of the sign um, which from uh, the sign height is restricted to 20 feet they were asking for 21 feet they have since then uh, pulled that request back and will uh, build to the 20 foot height limit um, but the uh, the uh, issue that uh, they really came through for the spud for was the uh, parking uh, requirements that they're asking for relief from um, our variance on um, there the requirements require 53 parking places um, and they're requesting that the uh, council give them relief to 30 um, Planning Commission staff recommend approval on the spud but uh, not on the variances so the applicant in the uh, audience could you come to the podium yes David box 522 call Court Drive uh, here on behalf of the, the applicant who is the developer also with me is mr. Dan Pryor with Dollar General uh, there was a lot of discussion at the Planning Commission uh, about the parking um, what we talked about was what you've seen really nationwide is a movement away from the traditional parking requirements that you see um, in retail uh, I was struck uh, at uh, the Planning Commission again this evening when I came if you noticed or paid attention to the Walgreens across the street what you will see is a sea of vacant parking uh, Dollar General like Walgreens are not typical retail the problem with the way that your code reads much like most codes in this part of the country is they treat retail the same uh, what mr. Pryor will tell you is you know, their form of retail is very different than the traditional form of retail in that they the trips generated are much quicker if you're going to a Dollar General you're going for one two maybe three items you're in there for 10 or 15 minutes you go to a grocery store or a traditional retailer you're likely there for an hour or, or longer and there's more people there um, I happen to count across the street at the Walgreens I counted over 60 empty spaces well I counted 19 cars there so one of the reasons that municipalities are going away from the traditional parking count is to allow for uh, more green space you have less uh, paving therefore your drainage requirements are perhaps uh, in better shape um, Dollar General has over 15,000 stores nationwide they have an enormous amount of data to pull from to know what they need um, I think perhaps more fundamentally is retailers will not underpark themselves that would be the death nail for any retailer so when they say that they need 30 spaces they know that there's just never a time that they will need more than 30 spaces uh, at the Planning Commission there were uh, several comments about our request several people that voted against the variance stated publicly that you know there was a Dollar General in close proximity to their home and they can't recall ever seeing more than 10 cars but they were worried about perhaps some sort of precedential effect that a vote would have uh, legally I can tell you and I believe your, your counsel will concur um, there is no precedential effect of voting for a variance on this case a, z a zoning case a variance all must stand on their own merits um, I'll, I'll let mr. Pryor come up here and speak but we're requesting the variance because we have an enormous amount of statistical data to show why we can meet the elements necessary set out in the statutes for a variance so the granting of our variance here would in no way require you to have to grant a variance to the next retailer that would perhaps come in and want a, um, a variance to the, the parking requirements so uh, we are asking for uh, approval of the spud again we did concede on the the height issue uh, but we are requesting the variance on the parking uh, I believe it comes down to really it's a policy decision does the city of Midwest City want this site to have a bunch of extra parking that we know will absolutely never get used I have, um, a, I have a question in that regard yes so one of your earlier comments which I guess I must have missed maybe with regard to the application for a variance in this matter was well if we cut down the parking then we would be able to increase the allowance of green space but you all aren't offering to install any green space adjacent to the business are you well what I'm saying is if we don't have to build the 
the extra 23 parking spaces, there will be that much more that doesn't get paved. Right, but um, I'm sorry, bear with me, but there's also a whole lot more right across the street by Winco that didn't get paved, and that stays grown up in weeds. So, uh, you know, my question is, you're not proposing with the variance to actually install a green space that would be maintained by your company, correct? Well, I mean, your ordinances will require that it be maintained in, in a fashion that is compliant with your ordinances. So, okay. yeah, it, it would be green space and it would be maintained pursuant to your ordinances. Uh, okay, so that, I mean, we can get the technicalities of that, but that would be like us sending code enforcement out there just like we have to do across the street by Winco in order to enforce the ordinances. What I'm, what I'm asking is, with the requested variance, is the applicant willing to provide a green space that they then voluntarily will maintain without the need for code enforcement to go micromanage that? Yes. I mean, they, yes. they are proposing to do that. Right. So basically, as you see there. Um, uh, sir, the, we need your name sure, and address, Justin please. Dills, 5300 North Dewey, Oklahoma City. Um, the lot size for which Dollar General is going to have won't change regardless of this variance. Process. Mm -hmm. So that will be yard green space. That's Can you speak maintained. into the microphone? I'm having problems Sorry. hearing you. I know people on TV are. I said that 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 area, the site plan you see, will be the same basic dimension regardless of 53 parking spots or the requested 30. <laughs> if we go with 30, that that what would be the additional 23 parking spots will be yard. So I've got a question long term. It's more it's more to a a planning issue which would be Billy and Guy. This place goes dark. We now have a facility with X number of square feet and too few parking. Um, that's that's correct. So there, I, I like to look farther ahead and, and, I, and when we do see nationwide we see retails go retailers go dark. Um, some of the issues that we have when they go dark is repurposing them getting somebody that wants to come in and buy a building that's ready to go and if they have to do new parking and everything else that's an added expense I also myself and I'm not an attorney I hate variances I'll, I'll acquiesce to you that maybe we should change our codes but would they sit the way they are right now yeah it, it, fair point uh, we do have a spud and so because it's a spud we can craft language in that spud that would perhaps you know curtail your fears about what might happen in the future. Um, I mean, variances are set up through statutes when you have unique situations and you have an ordinance that would create a particular hardship on one particular piece of property. Uh, we believe we have that here. Um, I mean, it, again, it, it is a policy decision. And, and I, to me, it's a simple policy decision. Does the city of Midwest City want a bunch of extra parking that won't get used? So you're looking micro and I'm looking macro. Well, I'm, lo I'm looking micro in the sense that I think all we can really look at is the merits of this particular spot. But you have to look at, in my opinion, what I think that we all try and do is the long term for other things like this. Long term, if you guys go dark, everything else like that, we have to look at more than just the micro of one piece of property. Well, because it's a spud, we can put language in there that would prevent the, the concern that you have if this Dollar General went dark. We could, we could condition it on um, this user or this specific type of, of retail. I mean that, that's the benefit of a SPUD is that it is an ordinance. And so when you, if you were to approve this, you're approving a very specific ordinance that can craft language specific to your concern. Since he's speaking legalese and I don't speak legalese, Heather, weigh in here, please. She hates when I call on her. Most lawyers do. Uh, Mr. Box, if I understand you correctly, you're indicating that the city could change the SPUD so that only a retail that would need that limited amount of space would be allowed to uh, take possession of that property. Is yeah, that or we can put language in the SPUD that is specific to you know, this user, that if the CO for this specific user were to expire, or if there's a change of use permit that the city requires, any change of use permit would not be eligible for this variance. That mm -hmm. would specifically tack to this one user. 
And so, John, does that kind of address your concerns about if this particular retailer goes dark, then what do we do with the property? No, because it still makes it less marketable. It makes it less marketable is the issue. And the other thing is, Mr. Bach's comment is, ultimately, you know, if we grant a variance in the circumstance, you know, that's not outcome determinative for the next applicant. It's not. However, you know, we can also have a whole lot of applicants come in and cite to, well, they were able to do it on their development. So why not let us do it? So again, I mean, it's, it's the risk of opening the floodgates, so to speak. So if we want to make a change in terms of our comprehensive plan, then I think that's something worthwhile to look at. But I'm not sure tonight's the night to have that conversation. And that's a valid concern. And to that point, I'd like the, the general from Dollar General get here. Because if you have somebody that's going to present you with over 15,000 stores of data as to why this is the need, well, then perhaps the variance would be warranted. But there is absolutely no legal precedential effect whatsoever by granting a variance in a, on a case-by-case -case basis. But I, I would like Mr. Pryor to, to please bring that. While he's coming up, I'd like to, I mean, I, I agree with what Mr. Box is saying, and they've done their studies, and um, they know their business, and they're not going to sell themselves short. So go ahead. Good evening. I, I'm Dan Pryor. I'm the real estate manager for Dollar General and Oklahoma is, is my territory. Uh, my address is 6658 Goosehatchee Cove, Arlington, Tennessee. And um, what Mr. Box was saying about um, our experience, we, we do have over 15,000 stores. Um, our standard, if you will, is 30 parking spaces. And we see that as excessive for, for our use because at any one time, there's, there's usually five to 10 cars at most in a busy store. Um, I have never seen a parking lot full. Um, the vast majority of our stores that are freestanding have 30 space parking lots. As I say, that's kind of our standard. And um, also as mentioned before, if you look at Family Dollar, it's very much the same as us. If you look at Walgreens, um, you know, I would contend that probably people that go to Walgreens spend more time in the store than we do uh, in our stores. Our um, typical ticket is, you know, 10 to $15, and um, generally people are coming in. It's, it's a convenience store, basically, where people are coming in, um, and we're providing uh, everyday items at a good price in a convenient location. And um, you know, one thing we pride ourselves on is, is trying to orient our parking such that it's convenient to the front door um, so that people don't have to walk a long distance. Um, to um, uh, address Ms. Eade's concern, um, you know, we do, um, we will have to make that a yard basically, what we don't pave, and that would be maintained as a part of our property. So, you know, most, most communities that, that we run into, they um, are more in favor of having more green space as opposed to impervious surface with the runoff issues and, and so forth that, that are created. So, um, you know, I'd be glad to field any questions, but, um, you know, we feel that that's a sufficient number or excessive number honestly for our use and a sufficient number for for other uses that would come along after us um, you know we would be entering into initially a 30-year lease i mean a 15-year lease with options to extend that multiple terms beyond that so uh, we're, we're trying to make a long-term commitment to the community and um, to this particular property are there any further discussion or uh, questions, gentlemen? Um, is there any further discussion? With that, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I second. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
<clears throat> See, clerk, we need a roll call vote. <laughs> Ward one, yes. two, no. three, yes, four, no, five, yes, six, yes. Mayor. Yes. The motion carries with the variance. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Very good discussion. We'll move into the next discussion item. This is uh, PC 1964, public hearing with discussion consideration of an ordinance to redistrict from R6 single family detached residential to SPUD simplified plan unit de development governed by the R6 single family residential district for the property described as lot 15, block 21 <coughs> of the Speckman Heights edition located at 101 East Kitty Hawk Drive. Mr. Arliss. Thank you, Mr. Henson. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the final steps in a, in a long process that uh, several of the council members and, and people within the community have been involved in on, on the uh, original mile study, um, the original mile reinvestment committee, um, and uh, um, the council themselves as far as uh, approving the contracts and proposals that have come for come forward uh, uh, through the uh, 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 request for proposals from from builders or developers to to help uh, uh, attract reinvestment within the original mile um, the next two items um, uh, this one at uh, 101 East Kitty Hawk uh, is to, to put two two houses on um, one lot um, uh, when we went through this process um, the city was looking at building the houses themselves and, and with a little uh, uh, vision from, from the city manager, Mr. Henson, he said, why don't we let the builders and developers uh, help us uh, find out what the market is for this area. And um, I think that was uh, 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 very insightful and, and the uh, applicant in this case, uh, Jeff Johnson, had brought forth a proposal um, that will, I think will cause a lot of interest um, and synergy around the original mile. Um, I do know that we've had a lot more inquiries on some of the vacant lots and, and, and things because of that. Um, I know you all are familiar with the project, but I'll, I'll uh, Mr. Johnson's here and, and, and certainly will be, I'll be glad to answer any questions as it will be. Are there any questions in Mr. Harless? This has been an ongoing project and we're uh, looking forward to moving it on down the road. That being said, Chair, to entertain a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Next item. This is PC 1965, public hearing with discussion consideration of an ordinance to redistrict from R6 single family detached residential to SBUD. Simplified planning to unit development governed by the R6 single family residential district for a property described as Lot 5, Block 6 of the Pine Edition, located at 220 East Kitty Hawk Drive. Um, yes, this is uh, very similar to the previous item. Um, since there weren't a lot of questions on that, I would like to go ahead and thank uh, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Eads for her leadership in, in helping with this on this committee and helping bring this forward, as, 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 as well as you, Mayor, as, as, a, as a member of that committee. Julie Shannon, who's our comprehensive planner, um, who's been instrumental in helping bring this project together. There's been a lot of work to get it to this point, and certainly Jeff Johnson for, for helping to, do, to, to uh, bring this forward. So we'll, again, we'll be glad to answer any questions. This is a public hearing. Anyone have any issues with this current discussion item? Hearing none, the uh, chair would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. I've got a motion and I've got a second. All in favor, Andy gave us saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extension, motion carries. Next item. This is discussion consideration of approving two qualified electors residing in Oklahoma County to represent the city of Midwest City on the board of directors of the Central Oklahoma Master Conservancy District, COMCD, for a four-year term and submitting those names to the Cleveland County District Judge who will appoint them to membership on the board of directors of the COMCD. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I would like for, to offer for your consideration Mr. Bill Chanacek and Mr. Kevin Anders as members of this board to continue on our work on keeping uh, Lake Thunderbird clean. Are they here? Uh, no, ma'am, they're not. Move to accept your nomination. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. This is discussion consideration of accepting the Oklahoma Spartans Youth Organization 2017-2018 financial statement. Is there any discussion on this, on this item? I would just express that I have concerns about the numbers um, in pre-council. We've discussed having Christy uh, work with, um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the gentleman's name. I apologize. Um, he was right it, 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 yeah, it is a discussion. She's going to. So I, th I think the, the, I think what uh, the direction here is, is that Christy is going to meet with him uh, after, during the season and after the season and that he's going to provide to us a financial report by the end of the year and that um, that you would like to meet and and have him uh, at a meeting in January to discuss his financial report or at least I would like Christy to be confident satisfied with the report I mean I trust Christy our plan is so. that I'm going to check in with him every month during the season if we uh, we're going to look at the processes he's using. If we note any problems, try to correct them as the season's going instead of waiting till the end of the season. And hopefully by the end of the season, we'll have gotten him back on the right track and, you know, and at the end of the season, give you a, a report with financials then and hopefully everything will be back on track. Christy, thank you very much right. for your help. And the only thing is, and I echo Susan's, I don't want this program to go away. We need Thank it. Thank you. But he, they need yeah. to understand that we're not a cash business. Yeah. We've got to have paperwork to support it. Because uh, if we ever get, when we're asked by our constituents, you know, we, we need to be able to answer those questions. So I appreciate your willingness to go overboard. I agree with you, and we'll, that's overboard. what we'll be checking every month. So, so thank, I want to thank you for your willingness to basically walk him through this process well I want to thank you also Christy and I'm sure that you know you all had the conversation uh, and that uh, he uh, he's along with and he appreciated and so this is a good program I like I wanted to keep going forward and I, I think sometimes um, it's been a lot going on at that particular um, uh, with Telstar and such with that property and such a lot's going on there <laughs> I know he's put a lot into it, and yeah. I know as he expo uh, is speaking on some of the things that was going on, mm -hmm. boys, the disadvantages of some of the kids being able, you know, to, to have the equipment and well as being parents being able to afford to uh, even participate in their uh, particular games. So with all that said, I thank you for what you're doing. Let's try to keep it going. Appreciate it. Thank you. And with your time. Thank you. With all that being said, any further discussion on this current item? I move to approve. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. The motion carries. Ladies and, item, ladies and gentlemen, we move into the uh, new business public discussion of our agenda. Does anyone have anything to bring before the council? Seeing or hearing none, uh, I need a motion for us to go into executive session. Do, do uh, go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah. Sure, we can do that. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, any saying aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Hearing that, I call to order the Midwest City Municipal Authority. We do have a consent agenda. These items are placed on the consent agenda so the trustees, by unanimous consent, can approve routine items by one motion. If any item proposed does not meet with approval of all trustees or members of the audience wish to discuss one, 
It will be removed and heard in regular order. Chair, to entertain a motion. Second. Oh. Had a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. We do move into the new business public discussion on the Midwest City Municipal Authority. Does anyone have anything to bring before the authority? Hearing none, we do have an executive session. I assume that we want to recess from this and go into the hospital authority agenda. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We now call to order the Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority. We do have uh, three discussion items on the agenda. First item is approval of the uh, minutes from the last meeting. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Next item. Next item is discussion consideration of supplemental budget adjustments to the hospital authority fund for FY 2018 2019. Uh, one would decrease the hospital authority fund expenses, hospital authority by a million eighty four thousand five hundred ten thousand dollars. Motion to approve. Second. We've got a motion and a second. second. Any further discussion? All in favor, any saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Extension motion carries. Next item. This is discussion consideration of action to reallocate assets, change fund managers, or make changes in the statement of investment policy guidelines and objectives. No action is necessary on this item. No action necessary on that current item. We now move into the new business public discussion of our agenda. Uh, does anybody have anything to bring before the Midwest City Municipal uh, Hospital Authority? Hearing none, and we do have an executive session. Uh, Mayor, Mayor, we will not need either of the executive session items on the hospital authority. And hearing that, we are hereby adjourned from the Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority, and we move in our call to order the Midwest City Economic Development Commission. We have uh, two discussion items on this agenda. First item is approval of the minutes from July 24th, 2018. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, any keep saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Next item for discussion. This would be discussion consideration of entering into a contract with the Midwest City Chamber of Commerce for fiscal year 2018-2019 for $3,000 per month to implement economic development events in the city of Midwest City. Mr. Mayor, this includes tinkering the primes, right? Yes, sir. That's affirmed. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, we move into the new business public discussion of the Midwest City Economic Development Commission. Does anybody have anybody, anything to bring before the commission? Hearing none, we are hereby adjourned. Um, I would call for a quick recess, and then we will go back into uh, session with the uh, Midwest City Mem uh, Municipal Authority. We will be going upstairs. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll be going upstairs for our executive sessions. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for voting today. And uh, uh, thank you for participating in your, uh, your government. Somebody said that caused you all to come down here. No, um, no, no. We just.